Now to solve that problem is the other half of the battle. Paul Schaefer reporting in San Antonio for NBC News. Scott Monfort has right. built so many houses in San Antonio and Austin, he says he's lost count. Well, he was a carpenter for 26 years before he went to work with the Northside School District. Now he is the building trade instructor at Holmes High School. Been with the district for 12 years. He says his students are learning a trade while attending school. They've just about completed this three-bedroom home in Forest Oaks at the corner of Evers Road and Forest Pine. Five other houses on the block have been built by his students, and families are living in them now. Well, Mrs. Coy, as a resident of one of the houses these students have built, uh, what would you have to say about your house? Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, we've enjoyed it, and um, very happy with it. <laughs> well, some of the students that have uh, been on these first two houses some of them are in business for themselves, some are running work for others, and it, uh, some were just like I was uh, 14, 15 years ago there, uh, uh, carpenter subs and painting subs and running their own crews now. The electrical trade class. Vocational director for the Northside School District, Bill Spanigle, said the houses have all sold at or above the appraised value. He said this house has already been sold, went for $60,000, which incidentally goes back into the school building trades program. The Northside School District is proud of their students' work, and they want to show it off with an open house that's scheduled for the first Sunday in May. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Standing beside the actual South Pole is Eagle Scout Mark Linemiller. He was selected over 2,200 other Eagle Scouts to participate in a three-month expedition there and became the third Eagle Scout ever to work at Antarctica. The first Eagle Scout accompanied Commander Richard E. Byrd in his 1928 polar expedition. 20-year-old Mark is from Marietta, Georgia, where he is an assistant scoutmaster. He came to San Antonio to recount his South Pole experiences last night at the annual banquet of the Tomahawk District of the Alamo Area Council. He told me his scouting background definitely came in handy on the expedition. It is a rather harsh climate, and just the skills that I picked up in scouting, you know, in the outdoors, it helped, you know, just do some of the people who had not had as much camping experience had a, lot, a hard time adapting and staying comfortable. Mark's photos recall many of his daily activities there, including an afternoon football game played in the snow bowl and sliding in the snow on scoop shovels and sometimes falling off. And a look at what the well-dressed penguins wear. Well, not to be outdone, Mark had his picture taken in a borrowed tuxedo. <laughs> Somehow, it looks out of place at the South Pole, doesn't it? Paul Schaefer, News Center 4.
Artist Susan Rogers says she can teach anyone to paint, and she proved it to me. This work was done by someone who had never painted before, me. <laughs> and it only took about 15 minutes. That's right, step by step, she talked me through the stages of painting this picture, while at the same time she worked on a similar scene. Step by step, I want you to just scrub across your canvas. That's great. That looks real good. <laughs> and then I want you to go ahead and fan very softly with a fan brush. See how that puts a lot of distance oh, on your sky? Like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Just Susan is right. a 1967 graduate of Robert E. Lee High School and holds a political science degree from the University of Texas. She came to town to demonstrate and conduct a one-day workshop to teach this revolutionary painting technique. Those demonstrations will be held Wednesday at the Oak Hills Motor Inn on Wurzbach near the Medical Center. The next day she will hold a one-day workshop. With her simple instructions, my work of art slowly began to take shape. Okay, now just pat on down. As you do your tree, come on down. I can't believe I painted the whole thing, but it took a lot of help from Susan Rogers, artist. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. <laughs>
when that was reigned over by kings and sovereigns in various countries. And the peasants, when they would have a festival, would pick one of their own to reign as king who would mock the real king during Carnival or Fiesta. 32 years ago, LULAC Council No. 2 adopted the ugly king idea as a means to raise money for its college scholarship fund for deserving youth. The king candidate who raises the most money, rather than votes, wins. Even before Logan Stewart was king, he urged LULAC to incorporate Refeo into Fiesta with a Parade. Tomorrow afternoon, the first parade of the ugly king will be held. Logan Stewart, Refeo, the ugly king. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. King Antonio the 58th, Rix Wilson. He's a native of San Antonio. Wilson graduated from Jefferson High School in 1948 and went on to SMU graduating in 1953. His family line established its home in San Antonio many years ago. His great-great-great-grandfather was a Spanish governor of Texas. And his great-great-grandfather was John W. Smith, the last messenger of the Alamo. Smith later became mayor of San Antonio in 1837. Wilson, a member of the Texas Cavalier, said he was thrilled when he learned his organization had chosen him to serve as King Antonio this year. And uh, they came by the house, the commander, and King Antonio, Paul McSween, and David Steeves, and rang the doorbell on a Sunday afternoon. I happened to be in my jogging clothes oh. and opened the door up, and there they were standing there with a hat, the king's hat, with a big red plume and a sword, and said, congratulations, King Antonio, 58. I said, you're kidding. And they said, no. And uh, we invited them in. We all had a drink and a little celebration. And uh, it was a very happy time. Wilson is the president of San Antonio Wilson Companies. He's chief executive of the Trust and Component Company, director of the Liberty National Bank, serves as Mayor Pro Tem on the Terrell Hill City Council. He and his wife, Barbara, have two grown children, 22-year-old Ann Coe and 21-year-old Ricks Jr. Long live Ricks Wilson, King Antonio the 58th. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Her Majesty, Queen of the Court of Victorian Splendor, Mary Elizabeth of the House of Pryor. Order of the Alamo President, Edward Hodge III, crowned the Queen in ceremonies at the Convention Center Arena. The 22-year-old Fiesta Queen is a graduate of St. Mary's Hall and will graduate next month from the University of Texas with a major in general business. The Queen is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ike T. Pryor. The family moved to San Antonio eight years ago from Houston. But Elizabeth and her sister Susan and Laura have always been fascinated by the Queen's coronation. We've been coming here for years and years and years when I was little. And I've always loved the coronation and always, the Queen was always something, you know, so fabulous. So it is such a treat for me, yes. I... Now way back your sisters were pages and, mm -hmm. and you were too young to be anything. I was anything. too young, but... Well, did that sort I of start it. a spark? Yes, it really did. I was kind of jealous of their involvement and not being a part of it. But. In 1978, her sister Laura was the Princess of Versailles in the court of the Sun King. And last year, Elizabeth was a Duchess. 
This year's princess is Liza Billups, the princess of sovereign Europe. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James S. Billups. Elizabeth and Liza have been friends a long time. Elizabeth, or E.P., as her friends call her, loves softball and plays shortstop on a girls' team. Mary Elizabeth Pryor, a queen of fiesta. Paul Schaefer, 